Good morning. Hope all is well. Praying that everybody day has started off lovely. I decree and declare that today will be a good day, that we will be filled with happiness, love, joy, and peace, and God's divine protection wherever we may go. Amen. I want to say thank you to all my new subscribers. The Lord has entrusted me with you, and I want to let you know that there's going to be some great things that the Lord is using me for. Amen. So stay tuned so that your life can be blessed. Anyways, today's topic is God has commanded the storm to cease. God has already commanded the storm to cease even before it come. Amen. A lot of you have people monitoring you all. A lot of you have enemies that you don't know about. But God said, don't even be alarmed. God said, just be still and know that he is God. Amen. Well, before I get into this word, allow me to say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for waking us this morning, and we thank you, Lord God, for protecting us, Lord God, as we slumber. Lord God, we thank you for being as magnificent as you are and wonderful as you are and faithful as you are towards us, God. We thank you, Lord God, for your divine protection. God, we know that you see all, Lord God. You hear all, and Lord God, you protect us even from the thoughts of the people, even from the things that they're thinking towards us. You protect us. God, and we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for that kind of love. We thank you for your love and kindness. Father God, we ask that you forgive us for each and everything that we have done that was displeasing in your sight. We thank you, Lord God, for being as forgiving as you are. But on this day, Lord God, I ask that I decrease and you increase, Lord God. Speak fully through me so that you may speak to the nations and speak to their spirit, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Always bring to remembrance the the things that you're telling us in these moments when we spend a long time with you, Lord God. But Lord God, most importantly, protect us from the wicked one, Lord God. We know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Lord God, you said in your word that no hurt, harm, or danger shall befall us. And so we thank you, Lord God, for that protection. We thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you, Lord God, for thinking of us and keeping a good eye on us, a good watch on us, and not letting the enemy take us out. Keep us as the apple of your eye. And may we continue to dwell in your presence each and every day. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare that's done. Will you all, the Lord said he have commanded the storm to cease on your behalf. And this just a follow-up from yesterday. The Lord had me, you know, talking about some of this on yesterday. But at the same time, he woke me up and I said a prayer this morning. He said, pray for a prayer against adversaries. So he wanted me to cover everybody uh, concerning people that may be coming up against you. God said, there's monitoring spirits. People are looking into your life and they hate you without a cause. And God said, it is not right. They are plotting up against you. They are planning an attack. But God God said it will not work amen god said he's already working on your behalf he already caused the storm to cease all you need to do is be still and know that he is god he led me to second samuel and he's had me to start reading at verse 12 but i'm gonna say this i'm, I'm not gonna go and i'm not gonna read all of that to you all because it was quite a bit i read but the part was I, where i started it i'm gonna just give y'all a backstory um King David's son, Absalom, killed one of his brothers because he raped his sister Tamar, right? So Absalom ended up fleeing for two years, waiting till his father, you know, calmed down. And he felt like his father wasn't mad at him no more. And he came back around. And when he came back around, King David didn't want to see him. He didn't want to see him in his face. He, he didn't want to have nothing to do with him. But, you know, long as he back in good health, welcome him on in. I just don't want to see him right now. And so Absalom waited. But he got impatient. Within two years, he got impatient. He set a field on fire. He wanted to see his dad. He wanted to get close to his dad. So he went through all of that trouble just to see King David. And when King David finally seen him, he hugged him and he cried and they made up and stuff like that. Little did he know his son was only getting close to him so he can receive the benefits that came with King David. And I want to warn some of you all, some of your children is coming and they are coming just to get things from you. They 
come in just to benefit off of you. They don't have good intentions for you. So be careful of who you letting too close to you in this season. It don't have to be just your child, but it can be someone else. God said, be careful who you let into your personal space. It's okay to help people all the time. It's okay to do things for people, but be careful of who you letting too close to you. Amen. But God kept pointing out the fact that, you know, it was King David's son. Even King David said, it was my own that came from my body. And sometimes you all, we can get so caught up on a person's title in our life or a person, person position in our life. We don't think they should betray us in the way that they're betraying us, but it's going to happen. It's always somebody close to you. It's always family that's laying to take you out. Amen. That's just, that's just how life goes and how life is. Amen. Until people stop you know, living in malice and unforgiveness and hatred and envy. This is envy that's provoking this person. They looking into your life and they being envious. They watch and God said there's monitoring spirits in your life that you're going to have to be careful over because they're going to go all out their way. They're going to act like they nice. They're going to act like they love you. They're going to act like they miss you only to reap the benefits from you. Amen. They don't care nothing about you. And this is something that the Lord, you know, was telling me about as well too. Absalom also, after he got in position and King David had blessed him with all of these things, guess what he did? He was out to kill his dad. And so King David ended up having to flee from his son. And so, um, the Lord is saying in this season, when it, the attack happened, that person is going to curse you some serious. Whoever it is, whoever coming back into your life, they're going to curse you some serious. But you going to have to know that that person is trying to pull you down. They trying to make uh, people stop following you. Maybe you're a leader of some sort or people look up to you. They want that to change automatically. And so your child or that person is finna try to bring you down. They want you to embarrass yourself. You got too much to lose to fall into that temptation, to fall into that trap. And uh, I'm going to read 2 Samuel 16, 11 and 12. It says, and David said to Abashi, and all his servants, see how my son who came from my own body seek my life. How much more now may this Benjamite let him alone and let him curse. For so the Lord has ordered him. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and the Lord will repay me with good for the cursing this day. So therefore, God is saying, even though they curse you, even though they coming up against you, even though they say anything out of their mouth, God said, just let them do it. Let them have it. Whatever it is, whatever they saying to you, it ain't nothing but words. God said, let them have it because he's going to look on your affliction and God is going to reward you good for the evil that they have came up against you. And so I wrote some things down here as I was studying. It says, God has sent things to happen. Okay. God has sent some of the, these things to test you, but some of them is not. It's just going to happen all in one big whop. Amen. It's a test to see how much you have grown to see if you learn to let the Lord truly fight your battles. So just let them just let them curse you and the Lord is going to look on your afflictions be willing to endure while waiting to see how will God make things work out so just let them have it do not get all worked up because it may be someone close to you just chill big and allow uh, just chill and do not allow a title of a person to affect your emotions toward them. We sometimes think a person owes us loyalty because their relation, relation to us and that person makes us upset. Overlook who they are so that you can pass this test knowing that the Lord will repay you good for your suffering. Okay, God said, make sure you pay attention. Don't pay attention to who they are in your life or what Kendrick are you. Even David was caught up on them, on the fact that that was his son. It came from my body. You're going to have to let that go. Your, your, our sons and daughters do whatever it is that they want to do. And something that God made me realize is that even though you got kids, you can't expect your kids to be just like you or make decisions just like you. You can't expect them to do what it is that you want them to do just because they came from from you amen and that you and your spirit is a certain kind of way it don't matter how you raise them up 
they still are their own person. They have a mind of their own. Some kids are rebellious. Some people are rebellious. You cannot expect them, your family members, to act just like you just because they can to you. Amen. So put them titles to the side. I don't care if your son, your daughter, your mother, your father, your sisters, or your brothers. Put it to the side because those are the main ones that the enemy is going to use to attack you. Amen. God says to level up even more. You keep rising and the enemy is going to try to stop you. That's why they're looking into your life and they're planning to pull you back down. They want to cause you harm. People have been monitoring your life and hating it. They can't stand it. So just be alert and keep in mind that it's a test at the same time. You don't have to fight because God is fighting for you. Amen. God is going to fight for you. You know that the Lord said that he will never leave nor forsake you. So whatever attack that happens, God is in it with you. Whatever storm that happened, God is in it with you. And he has already spoke to the storm and commanded it to cease. Amen. It says, further on in the story, it tells how David was actually running from his son. But he was about to go to war with him. But he told his servant not to harm him. David even had compassion on his son. He was about to go to war with him, but he said, leave him alive. He didn't want to hurt his son in there. And that's most parents, when our children come up against us or our family member, we don't want to harm them. Uh, and David told them to leave him alive. But guess what happened? Absalom was riding on a mule. His hair ended up getting caught up in the tree. And the mule kept riding, kept riding, left him hanging. <laughs> left him hanging. He really left him hanging. And so Joab walked up and seen him hanging and he took three spears and he went on and killed them he went on and killed them he got rid of the issue but what you don't realize and what i'm trying to say is is that you do not have to fight your battles even though you don't want it to be no harm caused in the midst of what's happening to your family to your children god is going to fight your battle regardless and god is reminding me just how we get in trouble with the state or whatever or we do something to a person we the person don't have to press charge charges on us because the state pick it up you can look at this you don't have to do nothing to the person because god is going to pick it up you do not have to fight your battles this person is really out to destroy you amen he want to have give you a bad reputation he want to ruin your reputation he or she want to ruin your reputations just be still and know that god is going to deliver you from that person amen from the person that's coming up against you you have to maintain your composure this is going to tell if you have the ability to delegate the authority to others and leave the results in God's hands. So you're going to have to leave the results in God's hand. Don't know, don't worry about how it's going to end. If you got to be quiet, just be quiet. But God said you cannot. You got too much to lose to go back and forth with somebody that hates you, that it being envious of you, something, somebody you didn't even know hated you from the inside out. God said you're going to have to stay focused. Stay focused. He says your strength as a leader lay having the hearts of your followers you have to realize that your strength as a leader lay in having the hearts of your followers okay so you got to make sure you pay attention uh be uh on alert and make sure you making good decisions and make sure you saying the right things and doing the right things because you have people following you and looking up to you and, and they have your best interests at heart god says so think about the position as a leader and to those who may be watching and then he led me to mark 4 39 it says then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and there was a great calm god has already spoken to this storm it's only to see have you leveled up it's only to level you up but don't let it pull you back down these people is going to come up against you, but now God is revealing them. They are not going to be able to hide the hatred. They're not going to be able to hide the envy no more. So therefore, just be on the watch and know that it's a test and know that it's coming and know that God has already worked it out. Amen. Well, you all, that's all the word that I have for you all today. 
And I pray that the Lord continue to uh, protect you from all hurt, harm, and danger and from the um, enemy because the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy, but he will not destroy you in this season. This is your warning. This is your sign that God is on your side, amen, and that God is protecting you so you can walk through this earth, amen, in life knowing uh, that God is protecting you in peace, amen. So, well, you all, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Remember that the Lord loves you, and so do I. God bless.